Hi everyone! In this video, I'll be showing you a full demo video of Webinar Loop 2. Let's begin! Now when you log into your Webinar Loop 2, you'll be greeted by your dashboard. You will see all the information it gives you, from total numbers and graphs. You will see total numbers of webinars, the available ones, even your total numbers of attendees and registrants. It also shows you in graphs and the list of your registrants and attendees. You have here all the records that you need, even for your webinars that are currently listed. On the top right corner, if you click on your name, you'll have the profile and logout button. Now, if we click on profile, you will see your profile page. If you need to edit your details, you can do so here. Just click on the edit button. And also for your password, if you ever need to change it. And if you want to upgrade your package, you can do so here. And also set in the time zone. Down here is a list of webinars that you are a presenter in. You will see all the webinars that you are included. And if we go on settings, you have the option to set up your SMTP or your Twilio. SMTP is for your email and Twilio is for your phone number. Let's click on SMTP. You will see all your SMTP server details. And if you want to add more, just click on Add SMTP button. Now let's see on Twilio. And here's where you can manage your Twilio numbers too. If you want to add more, just click on the Add Number button. Now let's go to Autoresponder. Webinar Loop 2 supports multiple autoresponders. You can click and choose whatever you need. To add more, just click on this button down below. Then, select your autoresponder. Now let's go to Webinars. Here's the page where you can manage your webinars. You can delete and add more on the list. You will see all the webinars you have created with the title, type, and date. And to create another one, just click on the Create Webinar button. All you need to do is add in the details for your new webinar, like the title, subdomain, and descriptions. You also have Actions button, like your webinar setup. And if we click on it, you will see all the steps you need to complete for your webinar to go live. Now first on the sidebar section is the dashboard for your webinar. If we click on it, you will see pie graphs of how many attended and registered to your webinar and also the webinar watch percent. All the names and emails of your attendees will be listed down below, also for your registrants. And everyone who interacts with your widgets will be listed down below for your record. Next on the sidebar section is details. Here are your webinar details, like subdomain, title, description, even the language, and the webinar type, which you can choose from live, scheduled, or on demand. Also for your access type, status, and even logo. And if you want to check all the steps you need for your webinar to go live, on the top right corner, you can click on the button. If your webinar is not complete yet, you will see it as pending. But if it is complete, you will see the button will say ready. And if we click on it, here are the steps that I'm talking about. First is the details, videos, schedule, presenters, and layout. Notice how mine are all in check mark. Meaning, I have completed all these steps for my webinar to go live. And if you're just starting out, some of it will be marked as X. And that's when you know you need to set it up first. And also here on the sidebar section, when your webinar is set up, it will change as light colors as what you're seeing now. But if it's not, it will be on dark color. Now let's click on videos and see what we have there. Here is where you will provide the URL of the video you want to use as the main video for your webinar. And we support YouTube, Vimeo, Vistra, Dailymotion, or a direct MP4 link. All you need to do is select a platform, enter in the URL, and the video length. Now on Schedule, you will see this tab when you have set your webinar 
on a schedule. You can select on a specific date or a recurring event. Once you've saved it, it will be listed on the repeat day schedule or the one-time schedule. Next on the list are presenters. It's easy to add a presenter to your webinar. All you need to do is enter in their email address, then click on Add Presenter. Then Webinar Loop 2 will automatically send them an email invite for them to be a presenter to your webinar. And once they have accepted, they will be added to the presenters list down here. And you also have the list for the presenters you have invited. You will see their email address, the invite date, the status, and if you're not sure whether they have seen it or not, you can click on the Reset Invite. Or if you want to delete it, just click the Delete button. Now let's go to Layout. You can select your preferred layout here. And we have a bunch of professionally made layouts. Just click on Select and Customize, and you will see the different layouts we have. You can choose or customize whichever you want. Next, let's move on to widgets. While your webinar video is ongoing, you can set up a webinar widget wherein your audience or attendees can interact. You can choose from poll, information, image, a call to action, or a question. Just click on one and add in the details. Next, we have chat. You can edit your webinar chat and settings here. You can also enable the recording for the chat during the webinar playbacks. You can add details, message, or a timer. Then all the webinar chat will be listed below. And next on the list, emails. You can choose to send your own email reminders to the registrants or stick with our default reminders. You can choose the SMTP, like I've said before, and enable or disable the custom reminders and default mails. You can also create a new mail and choose when you want to send it. And we also provided short codes for you to use when composing your email, so it will be a lot easier for you. Next is SMS. Make sure your audience does not miss your webinar by notifying them using SMS. This will only work if you have collected their phone numbers when they signed up. So just enter in your Twilio number and enable the setting. Next on the list are autoresponder. Like what I said earlier, Webinar Loop 2 supports multiple autoresponders. And if you've enabled this setting, Webinar Loop 2 will be sending leads to your autoresponders list. What it will do is send the leads to your autoresponder list. So all you have to do is select your autoresponder and you can select multiple. Also add in the list and your autoresponder is set. Now moving on, let's go to tracking. Here you can add tracking pixel codes. If you have any tracking code like for example Google Analytics, Facebook Analytics code or others, you can add it to the registration page and the webinar room page. Now on to Recruitment. Here on Webinar Recruitment, you will see your API URL and opt-in form code. You can use the API URL to auto-register your attendees. Just make an HTTP post call with the variables listed below. Here's your code for the webinar secret and your webinar code. If you want to reset it, just click on the Reset button. You can also choose templates for your opt-in form code. Now next is Zapier integration. You can click on this button to connect with your Zapier. And here you have your webinar code and webinar secret to set it up. Next, attendees. Here's the list of your attendees. You can also export it to CSV file. So you will have a record of it. And last but not least, integration. You have integrations here like lists to list and adds to list. If you need help on how to use it, 
you can click on the tutorial button here on the side to watch our tutorial videos for it. You can use the code in Adds to List and Leads to List to auto-register your attendees. Just click on the copy and paste it there. And you're all set up. And that is a full demonstration of Webinar Loop 2. I hope this video helps you. Thanks for watching and see you on the next one.